Welcome to part three of my building the skip. And I'm actually almost done. I'm gonna end up doing four parts. This is part three. And I'll post part four almost immediately. So I've had a lot of success and uh, it's been a fun build. It was a quick build, it could have been quicker, but with the editing and, and different things like that, it takes a little bit longer. But anyway, let me uh, show you what I've accomplished and then I'll go into detail on my experience with building this little ship. This is where I'm at, and uh, I like the contrasting colors. I like using the, uh, actually I did not use stain on all of these parts. This is just the tongue oil finish, and I really like that. The oars I made uh, completely by hand. They're not part of this kit. You can make them in the kit. It tells you how to do it. I just wanted the challenge of making my own, so that will be covered in this episode. And it's been a fun build. It'll be complete in episode four, and that one will be posted very soon. I've done a uh, first coat in white, and I've decided to go with this Jamaican Sea acrylic paint. And this is going to be one of my first airbrush attempts. I brushed this on, and the only time I ever used an airbrush was to like shadow some of my ships. This will be my first attempt to paint. When I look at the instructions, it says to try and mix it down, because this is pretty thick, to the consistency of milk, so we'll see how well I did. I'm purposely going slow because I don't want to mess it up. If you've ever brushed before, you push down to get the airflow and then pull this uh, lever back to increase the paint level. I think that's good for my first coat. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. Here we go for coat number two. very happy with that. I'm concerned. I was trying to keep this uh, unpainted. I have a feeling it was loose on this end and the paint did squirt up in there. So let's look and see. No, I think I'm okay. I may stain this instead of having it being the turquoise. In this segment, I begin with step number 63, and it has you cut a piece that will go right here. However, I will mention that when I turned the ship over, I could see some of the glue markings, the glue had kind of run out. And so that, you know, you could just see the glue underneath the white paint. So I took my sanding block, sanded that, and you can tell where it was raised because the paint is now gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and repaint this white. Then I will put this center strap in place. However, I have some of this exact material only in black walnut. So I'm going to replace that with black walnut instead of just this uh, white wood and on those pieces, I'm going to use this tongue oil and leave it natural. Give you an idea what that's going to look like. Here's a sample of the, what's gonna be one of the seats in the ship. This will go, I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but this will go right in there. So you get an idea of what I'm shooting for as far as the the contrasts of colors and the richness of the walnut. This was supplied with the ship, but some of these other pieces were not. So I'm just gonna swap those out. You don't need to do that. You can make your boat your boat by deciding what colors to paint or what stain to use. Come to a point where I'm gonna have to make a decision on my own because something looks a little odd in the instructions. It shows putting this piece on the boat and it almost indicates that it just goes right up to the edge of the boat. Well, 
this, this does not have this front piece put on yet. It's put on in uh, step number 64. When you get up to step 66, it clearly shows that this piece is going all the way to the end up here. And then you're gonna sand all of this off so that it comes to a point. So fortunately, I looked ahead and I accounted for that and my piece of wood does go that far. If you use the measurements out of the book, this piece is a little bit shorter. Well, I guess it, it just barely goes beyond the nose of the ship. So it probably would be okay if you follow that because when you sand this down to a point, that's probably about where the point's gonna be. My recommendation is to do step 64 before 63. That way you get this piece on and this piece can go up a little further. Your option. Holding it down with my fingers to start with once it's set up and I'll put some clamps on it for a little while. And this one back here. And one in the center. That one's not even making contact, so I will have to improvise with a little block of wood. Perfect. Set that little block of wood on there. Step number 66, we're going to sand this down. I'm gonna use my belt sander to get most of it, and then I'll use the sanding block to do the final touches. There's a good chance I'm gonna stain the front of this. So I've left it just slightly raised above the white to get a, a definite uh, form that it's something more solid than the side of the ship. So I'm still considering that. Speaking of stain, remember when I said I always stain before I glue because it messes things up? You can see right here, I had put this in place before I stained it because I thought I might paint it and then I decided to stain it. I can still paint over the stain, like I've said before, but you can see right here, the stain did not take. The glue, when I put it in, must have seeped over there. Still talking about step 66. This bottom part is real pointy. This needs to be rounded, as shown here in the drawing. So again, you're back to your sanding block and you're just gonna slowly Work this to a rounded tip. Step 67, we're going to make a, a stern cap. Off your parts sheet, there is this little piece here. It is a stem cap, and there is a slight indention or a hole on one end of it. We're going to need to cut this exactly in half, and then glue the two halves together with that little dot on the outside. That's like a little pilot hole for you so you can drill a hole through it. Once you glue them together, you drill a 16th inch hole where that indention is. And that's right there. Then you're going to cut this off down from the bottom of that hole down to 3 30 seconds of an inch. I've already done that. So that's the throwaway part there. This is your stem cap, and it's going to end up going right up here. I did use super glue to attach the stem cap to there. Once that dries, I think what I will do is do a little sanding on it so it matches the shape of this. And because I had to sand the end of that, I went ahead and sanded a little bit, and I think I was able to 
cover up my uh, stain not adhering because of the glue. There's a little light mark there, but uh, not enough to even worry about. Step 71 and 72, and I've already done this. It's uh, making a line 5 sixteenths of an inch from the top edge down to here, drew a line, and then you attach these supports for this back seat. And I kind of shown this earlier. So that will go there and those supports hold that. Once those are glued in place, that takes you through step 73. In step 74, we're gonna go back to some of these uh, extra pieces that I have. Kind of set them here. There is a specific way. There's a pointed edge and a squared off edge. The squared off edge goes up the side rail. To get these to fit square, you will need to take your sanding block and bevel these edges just a bit. And what I'll do is I'll just keep playing with it until I get it right. Here they are in place. You can see this is the square edge that goes towards the front of the ship and then this curvature goes to the back. Something I'm playing with, um, it, it tells you how to make oars, but the oars that I've seen, uh, I don't really like them. So I'm trying to make my own oars. I'm starting out with a half inch uh, dowel rod and I've got this miniature lathe. I've kind of gotten it down to where the handle would be and now I'm gonna hand carve this into the flat surface of the oar. That's not necessarily part of this video, but it's gonna be kind of interesting to see if I can get it done. I'm also gonna use my belt sander quite a bit from this point on to fine tune the handle and to get this flat surface. I probably spent a lot more time on these than if I had made them with the kit, but I'm very happy. These are made totally by hand from half inch dowel rod. I use so many different tools some of them were even um, hand files, the little tiny files. I used a full-size belt sander. I used my mini belt sander. I tried to use a, a miniature lathe. I started with that. Um, they were just too long and ended up, I, um, I split the wood on one on the back side. See if I can see it right there, but I'll fill that with wood putty. And uh, I can paint them, or I think I'm going to try and stain them. Here are my completed ores, and you can tell there's little uh, darkness differences. That's from the burnishing, ba basically just taking a flame and uh, slightly burning it, I guess. What I used was a dark walnut stain. So those turned out pretty good. I'm happy with those.